Good evening, good evening. Can you all hear me? Yes, magnificent. Um, a very, very warm welcome, Your Excellencies, ladies, gentlemen, friends, partners, colleagues, everyone. Uh, welcome to the British Library, uh, where I have the great pleasure of being Chief Executive. And welcome to a little bit of London that is forever Jaipur, to the Jaipur Literary Festival ZJLF 2019, which we are delighted once again to be hosting this uh, collaboration, partnership, friendship, whatever you want to call it, it could not be more apt for us here. We are, as I hope some or many of you know, not just a, a center of literature, of ideas, of encounters, and of conversation, but also, as some of you will know, one of the world's great collections of books, manuscripts, archives, scholarship, research, creativity, um, about relating to and around South Asia and India. And we hope that those of you who haven't yet explored the collections here will be inspired and have a chance uh, during your visit over this, this weekend. So the fit could not be closer. And I think it was, what, uh, three, four years ago? But as soon as Sanjoy and I got together over what I remember as a cup of tea, and he seems to say was a glass of wine, uh, or some blend of the two, uh, uh, the penny dropped immediately that this would be a wonderful location uh, for this great, great touring festival uh, to find its home uh, each year uh, in this city. Uh, and it has, in the best possible way, been growing ever since. This year's program is richer than ever. My duty is simply to thank and congratulate all the supporters of this venture, uh, all the teams who have put it together, um, uh, from Teamwork Arts, uh, British Library and beyond, uh, notably the co-architects of the whole thing, Namata Gokale and Willie Dalrymple, and without further ado, the person I'm about to welcome to the stage to introduce uh, uh, proceedings properly, uh, the Managing Director of Teamwork Arts, Sanjoy Roy. Sanjoy. <laughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the High Commissioner of India to the United Kingdom, the High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to uh, India, uh, the Ambassador to the UAE, the former Ambassador uh, to India, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for coming here. This is our sixth adventure here in London. Uh, the British Library, uh, Roly, his colleagues, Jamie, Conrad, John, have been incredible partners and really welcomed us here with open arms. For us, it's coming home. When we had this conversation, as he said, four years ago, and it was a glass of wine, <laughs> it was at the then High Commissioner's residence, I don't drink tea, uh, you know, <laughs> certainly not uh, after six o'clock in the evening, uh, we decided to make this plot, and the plot has been very successful, as most plots are. You have a plot going on in Parliament as we speak, which is wonderful, and I hope that sort of comes uh, uh, to good, as opposed to uh, the way it's, it's presently going. Uh, all of us across the world have to deal with uh, spellings and words and whales, as opposed to whales, <laughs> and literature is perhaps one such way of doing so. Perhaps if he read a little bit, it, it would have made the world a better place. Uh, literature and the arts uh, creates empathy. Uh, it looks really at how we can build equity. And in a really growing world where there's more divisiveness and there's majoritism, as we can all see around us, then we, uh, and I say this larger we, hoping that many of you who, who read and stand for literature and for words and for thought and for everything that humanity stands for, we must stand together and we must make our words heard perhaps louder than those shrill voices that today cut through the dead of the night and take over our brains and minds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our amazing writers, today more than any time, because of the way the digital age has taken over. We need you to be able to make sense of the past, divine the future, and perhaps set in context what we're going through at this very point of time. These are difficult times and these are difficult tasks. And 
As we look forward, as we must for the next generation, it's absolutely important for each one of you or each one of us to be part of this particular story and journey. Thank you all very much for being here. Uh, London, in many ways, is home. Uh, and we are absolutely delighted year on year to return with this wonderful program that Namita and William will take you through in a second. We're also delighted to announce that for the first time, we are going to Belfast. It wasn't a decision that was taken in, in any haste. The, the Arts Council of Northern Ireland, uh, British Council um, of uh, Northern Ireland, the city, uh, came to us year on year. For five years, they came to us in Jaipur with a bid, uh, both financial and otherwise, to say, please come to Belfast. And for people like me who come to London or Edinburgh or Birmingham and Manchester, we tend to believe that the UK is much more of that. When I went to Belfast in March, I realized that it wasn't. It was a deeply troubled place. For them, Brexit is a reality. Each one of the people at the table that I was sitting with, uh, the head of Arts Council, uh, the head of British Council, the head of the International Festival, the head of Lyric, were all citizens of the Irish Republic. And I asked them, I said, what will happen one week later, which is when Brexit was supposed to come to pass, and I said, what will happen? And they said, you know, life as we know it will come to an end. Uh, they also told us that if, they, if we didn't come there, they didn't have a platform which was neutral, where people could come together and talk about all the many issues that they have on both sides of the divide. And that's the reason we accepted and agreed to go there. If any of you are free next weekend, please come along to Belfast. We promise it will be a wonderful experience. And we have the Seamus Heaney uh, home place, which is an amazing place. And more importantly, we're here with cricket. Uh, and unlike, as I said yesterday, cricket sometimes get brained out. We won't. We've got wonderful venues here at the British Library, so please join us uh, both tomorrow and day after. Uh, festivals like this are mostly impossible without the support of a huge number of people, and I take this opportunity to thank uh, Z, our partners, uh, the Bagri Foundation, uh, Ra, and uh, Gauri is sitting right there. I don't think Lekha still... She's back tonight. She's back tonight, so thank you very much for your support. Uh, and uh, the Taj group of hotels, who, of course, uh, accommodate our wonderful authors. And to share a little bit about the program, please join me in welcoming a uh, writer, publisher, and a festival core director, Namita Gokhale. So we return for the sixth year. It's always a special joy to be here at the British Library, this unparalleled repository of knowledge. I'm a college dropout, and uh, it means something to me to be here among all these books, memory, archives, shared scholarship, which inspire the creative mind. Uh, I'd like to begin with a tribute to the late Girish Karnad, who was a great friend of the festival, who left us last week and had contributed so vitally to literature, theater, cinema, and all the arts. Girish was a director of the Nehru Center in London from 2000 to 2003. And there are many in the audience who will remember his years here and all that he did to connect people and ideas. He was with us at the festival till the very end. The Jaipur Festival, the largest free festival in the world, silence. The Jaipur Festival is the largest free festival in the world. It's a place where India thinks aloud, argues with itself, listens to itself. It is plural, diverse, multilingual. We're a young festival, and uh, it's unbelievable that 60% of our audiences are below the age of 25. I don't know how many of you are under the age of 25, <laughs> but I, it, 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 it's something transformative happening in the largest democracy in the world that they come to hear writers. Uh, we have editions, as Sanjo I told you, in uh, Belfast, followed by festivals in Houston, New York, Boulder, Colorado, Toronto, Adelaide. 
And uh, there's a joyous spontaneity, a democratic spirit, and extremely rigorous programming, which are the authentic hallmark of this festival, which carry audiences to us wherever we go, perform uh, absolutely transforming the perception of South Asian writing around the world. Uh, oh, I'll just tell you a bit, I'll read out a little bit about the sessions in case I skip some of the notes I've made. Our uh, opening sessions, which you'll uh, enjoy very soon, explores cities and empire with Tristram Hunt, Shashi Tharoor, and Shabani Basu. In the days to follow, Ben Judah and Marie Brenner search the changing face of London and the shadow cities within it. We invoke Rabindranath Tagore in the Bengal Renaissance and celebrate his deep connect with nature and through Anandagaon, which are the songs of joy, Tagore's songs of joy. Malika Victoria, who you would know as Queen Victoria, the Empress of India, had a long reign, much of which was indeed contiguous with Tagore's life. Miles Taylor has written a fascinating biography, which is also an account of Victoria's relationship with India. Uh, Navteh Sarna and Amrit Kaur Lohia discuss Guru Nanak, the founder and first guru of Sikhism, through his travels, his poetry, his philosophy. Uh, Navdeep Suri's beautiful book on Jaliawala Bagh, the translation of his um, grandfather's poem, is with Justin Rowlett of the Rowlett Act, who was actually a part of it. So there's history unraveling at many levels through these sessions. And of course, in the cricket session, Cricket Country looks at how the game helped fashion the imagined communities of empire and nation. Marcus de Sotoy returns to JLF to speak of creativity and artificial intelligence because the narratives of the future will be transformed through the telling of a, a ma mass mind to draw upon. Uh, Angela Saini speaks very powerfully on the intersectionalities of race and class as she talks also about the impact of, in her books, inferior and superior. She talks about women and science. The session very dear to me is on Begum Rana Liaqat Ali, uh, where, which is a collaborative biography across the barbed wire fences of India and Pakistan. And our friend from Pakistan, uh, Poonam Ayub, has made it here today. I'm delighted. Nobel laureate Sir Venki Ramakrishnan tells us the human side of science and decodes the secrets of the gene. Helena Kennedy is eloquent in how Eve was shamed. Ruth Padel and Predna Bindra speak of wildlife conservation in India. And the elections, of course. How can we forget the recent elections, which will be dissected, debated in the dance of democracy? And last but not least, we are proud to announce the RA award, the Ra Award for debut writing for Tasha Suri's outstanding fantasy novel, Empire of Stand. So that's it. Literature is an infectious form of magic. Our keynote speaker in 2013, the great writer Mahashweta Devi, declared that the right to dream should be the most fundamental human right. And this June, we look forward to celebrating the dreaming mind with you tomorrow, day after today. Thank you. It's been an extraordinary thing to watch the growth of this festival. Um, as I always say at this point in the festival, it started off the first year in the Durbar Hall in Diggy Palace with 16 people, of whom 15 were, no, 10 were Japanese tourists who had got lost <laughs> and were looking for Amer Fort uh, and, and left halfway through the first session. So <laughs> it's been getting a bit better since then. And uh, this year, I think we, we were very close to uh, uh, a quarter of a million footfalls, over a quarter of a million footfalls, uh, which is sort of the same sort of size as Glastonbury. Um, uh, and uh, I think we are the largest literary festival in the world now. Um, uh, with, thank you. It's a particular pleasure for me to come back to the British Library, which has been my office in London for many years, um, and uh, where uh, my books have all been written and researched, and it's very nice to see this end of, uh, of my life sort of double back on it. Um, and a great, very generous of Roly Keating and his team to, uh, to host us in the incredible way they do. Um, we have an amazing uh, two days ahead of us. Uh, Namata has, has, has showed you the program. Um, and uh, it's a particular pleasure next week to be going back to 
uh, going, sorry, to Northern Ireland, we tried to get Seamus Heaney, uh, and he said that he would come, and uh, very sadly, the same year he died. So we're now going to him, uh, to the Seamus Heaney uh, home place uh, next year, uh, which, is, uh, which is a wonderful uh, extension of this journey, which has gone now through Boulder, Houston, New York, Toronto, Adelaide, and now Belfast, uh, and continues to grow. Other, uh, other satellites are planned. The British... Indian relationship is a very long and, and complicated one, but one that is still incredibly vibrant. Uh, Sir Dominic, uh, our High Commissioner, calls it the living bridge. Uh, and I think literature uh, and uh, discussion uh, is, is, is the most appropriate way to analyze and, uh, and uh, look at this relationship, which I think is much more complicated than many Brits understand. Uh, and seeing the incredibly articulate and heated debates we've had over the legacy of colonialism and its aftermath over the years, uh, not least with a, a certain MP from uh, Kerala uh, recently voted in with a record uh, majority, uh, uh, who you'll be hearing from shortly, uh, uh, who has, has contributed, uh, contributed endlessly uh, to this festival. So I'm going to get off the platform, and I think, uh, well, have we got, uh, yeah, I'll hand over to Sanjoy, always safer. <laughs> So between the three of us, Willie is bhaiya, uh, Namita is auntie, and I'm the neutral one. And invariably, it's auntie who sort of reprimands bhaiya and me, because she does most of the heavy lifting. <laughs> On behalf of uh, my colleagues, uh, Kritika, Sharupa, and Preeta, please join me in welcoming uh, the High Commissioner of India to the United Kingdom, Ruchi Ghansham. Thank you so much, uh, Sanjay. Honorable <coughs> Member of Parliament from India, Dr. Shashi Tharoor, High Commissioner of UK to India, Sir Dominic Asquith, Ambassador of India to the UAE, Navdeep Suri, Lords, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I must say that it is a little intimidating to have to speak in front of people <coughs> whose life's work and business is words. I don't know if I can find the words uh, which can uh, excite or entertain people who make it a life's passion to use words to excite the rest of us. But before I say anything else, I have to say that Sanjay's views are his own. Uh, at 6 p.m. in my house, Sanjay, we drink tea. <laughs> <laughs> Well, drinking tea is a very important pastime in every Indian's life, uh, and certainly mine. Uh, but anyway, coming to uh, this festival, I am really delighted that uh, we have the British Library as home to this festival. Uh, it's a repository of knowledge, of uh, wisdom, of delightful books and manuscripts. I had the pleasure of viewing a very small section of that. And I must say that uh, during the course of my stay in London, I have every intention of coming back uh, more than once to see what more uh, one can find over here. So we could I don't think there could have been a better venue for this collaboration. And so congratulations to, uh, to Z, uh, JLF that uh, they chose the best possible venue in London. <coughs> I'm also very happy that at the Nehru Center uh, tomorrow, we have this uh, program on uh, Tagore and the Bengal Renaissance, and, the, and there would be Rabindra Sangeet by, uh, by Mrs. Reba Som. That would be, I think, a very good uh, uh, introduction or a good part of this uh, festival. Namita started with paying uh, tribute to Girish Gadnad. And uh, we are also trying to do later at the month at the Nehru Center a book reading of uh, works by Girish Karnan. And I would be happy if those of you who are in London would join uh, for that. The details would be available on our website. 
now um, i think i have said all the important things that i had to say uh, so let me start about uh, books books are really our uh, window into the world i grew up in a small town in um, for part of my life in central india and part of my life in in north india at a time when there was no television and i never uh, i had never been on a an, on an aeroplane i had only ridden trains from one part of india to the other and i had never even visited the south of india yet i never felt deprived of uh, knowledge or understanding about what the rest of the world was like and at times i remember i would talk to people so knowledgeably quote and quote knowledgeably about other parts of the world that i had never visited that people would even ask me uh, have you ever lived there because you seem to know so much about it and where was that knowledge coming from it was coming from books not serious books but story books story books written by uh, writers in different parts of the world that we as read as children to understand just to have fun but at the same time in the process we imbibed so much about the life and the culture of that place at that particular point of time that it almost became a reality even without ever having seen it when we read pride and prejudice we don't read just an interesting story of course it is an interesting story but it is also our window into the times that that book was set in it tells us about the values of the people that their lives the kind of clothes they wore uh the kind of language they spoke information which we may otherwise have never access to of course reading books was uh, the only window to the world before television rudely interrupted our lives and arrived in our uh, living rooms but even television cannot do without books because somebody has to write the stories which they then uh show so books are a really important window uh into the world especially the past a very important source of history but books are also our windows into the world of today when i first went to africa for a posting it was the first time that i had set my foot on the soil of uh, mainland africa i had been to mauritius but never been to africa and everything was different everything was new and yet one had to learn very quickly about the country about the people about the continent and where was the answer to be found obviously books there are books that one can read on not just the country but on the continent or the place i mean it it can be any part of the world wherever you go if you want to get an understanding of the place and the people you always turn to books so it is such a wonderful thing that books and writers are being celebrated at this event i can't think of a better way for us to celebrate life itself because all of us would have at some point or of time or the other uh, relied upon books to take away our boredom to fill up, fill the gaps in our knowledge to make us better aware to make us better human beings whether it's philosophy or uh, or history or culture we would have turned to books or spirituality for that matter so it is really nice that we have this event running into its 6th year and i hope that this 6 years will be 12 years and and so on and so forth my uh, english is better than my arithmetic <laughs> so but i hope that there are many many more such festivals i'm really proud to hear that this is now the world's uh, biggest literature festival i wish the very very best to the festival to all the participants i hope you have a wonderful time and keep keep up this work thank you thank you thank you very much high commissioner please join me in thanking our principal partners diageo for keeping us well pickled to cope with these difficult times 
and to our world partners, the Aga Khan Foundation, and I think Matt and his colleagues are here. Thank you all very much for your support. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tharoor, and many congratulations for winning your constituency with double uh, the or triple. Seven times. Seven times the number of votes that he got. <laughs> Somebody asked me at the reception, so how, but how did he withstand the wave? I said, he's a world citizen. He's a citizen of the world. Congratulations. Please welcome on stage Shrabani Basum, Tristam, and Dr. Shashi Tharoor. And over to Humaira, who's going to introduce the session. Thank you all very much.